What's going on guys? Hope you guys are doing good. Had some spare time this past week and I've put back together the air rifle that kind of started this channel, that kind of started my um, adventure into air guns. So the first air gun that I bought when I was getting back into this stuff as an adult was a Hotson AirTact and it broke within 100 shots, ended up sending it back. And the second thing, the second air rifle that I bought was a Stoger x10 yes stoger x10 they were on sale from amazon and i could not get this thing to shoot so i ended up buying a spring compressor and taking this thing apart a bunch of times and then i've ended up using parts from different crossman rifles to get it to its current incarnation i'm going to turn the camera around and show you guys some of the stuff on this air rifle and then we're going to shoot a couple groups with it all right guys, so this air gun is a Stoger Model X-10. Um, these haven't been sold for a while and they were basically just a B-19 air gun. The stock came from a Crossman G1 Extreme that I bought off of eBay. Any of you, any of you guys that watch eBay and you see a Crossman G1 Extreme pop up, they're definitely one of the best brake barrels that Crossman ever produced in, in the budget realm. But the big problem with the X-10 was the barrel the barrel was not accurate at all it had a bunch of that plastic junk all over it couldn't get to the crown so i used the barrel from a g1 extreme that same one that the stock came from um, actually the the gun that i bought the g1 extreme the compression tube was messed up and it had a broke spring so this build kind of worked out great but these barrels you can just pop this little fake muzzle brake off of and get to your crown really easily and these barrels are much higher quality than the stuff that Crossman is putting out now. I think they actually use these barrels a lot on the Benjamin air guns after they stopped making these rifles. I did chamfer the breech right here and replace the breech seal, but it has a really good lockup and it's a really accurate barrel. Then for the optic, I'm using a, a BSA Outlook 3x9x40 AO. This, in my opinion, is the best air rifle scope available unless you're wanting to spend 225 bucks on a hawk air max Th these are less than 100 and they're fantastic scopes this is probably the 10th springer this scope has been on I've, I've been using this scope for probably two and a half years now no problems with it whatsoever it zeroed up today fine I, I just slapped it on here the other day and it's working great I've got a generic one piece mount. I'll probably change this in the future, but it's working good, so maybe not. For the trigger, I used a really early Crossman Quest. There's a few different variations of the B19 trigger, and this is the one with the stamped metal trigger. But this version of the trigger is easy to work on. It's easy to dial in, but you can't use the RC wheel bearing mod on these triggers. It does have a really long trigger pull, and you can kind of tune these in to feel like a two, a real two-stage trigger and then again back to the stock i use that g1 extreme stock if any of you guys see a g1 extreme on ebay i would pick one up if it's reasonable and then inside of the air gun i can't show you that stuff but i'm using a vortex spring a vortex seal a i'm using the stoger piston because it's a little heavier than a crossman piston and then i'm using a custom cut top hat that one of my buddies made for me that's just a little bit heavier than the crossman piece so let's shoot a group with the stoger i've got a target out at 25 yards i'm going to be shooting off of a shooting stick and using the jsb 8.44 grain exact pellets these are the 4.52 head size and it keeps trying to rain on me so if i take off in the middle of this group to put my cameras up you guys know what's going on so another good thing about this setup is this air rifle is really heavy these stocks are heavy the barrel's heavy it's a pretty heavy rifle it's not super hold sensitive so my point of impact doesn't move that much if i have the rest at the same place that my hand would be so right as that little bend in that stock that's normally where i put the rest but let's shoot a little five shot group and see what this thing will do at 25 yards And the reason that I'm using this trigger on it currently, I had one of the newer models on there, but I couldn't get the anti-bear trap to work. So I put the older one on there and now I'm not afraid of it uh, when I'm loading it and I'm not afraid of it going off. So. But 
But with the hotter spring in there, with the heavier parts, it's putting about the same FPS that these guns were putting out stock. I just get better results from a little bit heavier piston, top hat, and then that hotter spring and that vortex seal. He somehow embeds molly into the seal and the more you shoot them, the better they seem to be. But the trigger pull is long. I'm gonna have to work on this trigger a little bit. I've got one of those gold uh, Charlie the Tuner triggers for it that I didn't put on there. I wish I would have. And last shot here at 25 yards. We'll probably move it back a little bit. A lot of wind on this shot. And there's a squirrel right there. They're getting a little too brave out here. Let's see where he run to. Anywho, let's shoot a six shot on there since I've got this thing loaded up. I hope you guys can see that squirrel run right by me. I've had snakes do that, but not squirrels. There we go. So 25 yards shooting off a shooting stick with a springer. That's pretty good from me. I'm going to move the target back to about probably 30. 35 yards and we'll do another group and see what I can do with this setup. Okay, we're set up, that's about 35 yards right there. If another squirrel comes by, I'm getting him. That's also another reason why you should be shooting with your dominant eye, regardless of if you're right-handed or left-handed. I'm actually right-handed. I'll prove it to you, I'll shoot a shot right-handed real quick. But I grew up shooting right-handed and then found out in Marine Corps boot camp that I actually couldn't see well enough and that I was actually left eye dominant. So that's why I shoot left handed. But if you can't shoot with both eyes open, you're probably shooting with the wrong eye. If you're having to do that every shot, in the grand scheme of things, it may not matter that much, but you might get better results if you took the time to learn to shoot with your dominant eye. But let's shoot a group, five shot group at 35 with an eye that I can not really see that well out of. Okay, let's do a couple left-handed. So I think I'm gonna move my zero over just a little bit. And then I've got a bunch of beer cans that, or I've got a bunch of beers that I bought For Memorial Day and I drank two of them so I'm gonna move my target back out to 50 we'll go get some of those beers shake them up real good and see if I can hit some cans off the shooting stick at 50 maybe even try a couple offhand but one more shot and check my scope adjustment that I just did yeah that felt right one more yeah, so where the trigger's breaking, that's where it's hitting. I'm gonna get set up and we'll shoot at 50 yards. All right guys, so 47 yards. Let's see if I can hit any of these bottles. Again, this is a 177 air, air gun. Got a little bit of wind right to left. It's actually trying to rain on me. I'm just gonna aim at nine power, like my second mil dot, probably center mass. Actually, let's go over to the right-hand side of the, the bottle. Looks like I hit the very top of it. So, 
aiming a little too high. This thing is cooking pretty good with that spring in there. So let's go first mill dot. A lot of wind on this shot. Don't get your hopes up. There we go. So still not enough power to knock them off. Let's see if I can hit that one more time. This is honestly going to be tougher for me at laying flat. First mill dot, a lot of wind. Don't start raining on me now. I got two more bottles. Yeah, I missed that one. So let's just move on to that second one. See if I can hit that one. That's going to bother me though. Maybe we can come back to it. Good clean miss there. Good solid miss. Let me adjust my, my stance a little bit. Okay, here we go. sucks <laughs> all right here we go there we go goodness that one <laughs> that one was stubborn i'm gonna try three offhand it's probably gonna be luck if i hit it but let's try it anyway i think 50 or 47 whatever this is i think that's a little far for this but <sighs> nice should have just been doing it offhand the whole time i think going a little bit quicker sometimes <laughs> is the way to do it let's see if i can hit that other can this is where i shoot 15 times in a row and miss it I'll give myself three here. Nice. Should have been shooting offhand maybe the whole time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the old Frankenstoger down in the comment section. This is probably, I buy and sell a lot of stuff. This is probably one that I will never get rid of and I probably won't ever get rid of my other Crossman G1 Extreme that uh, that I own that looks exactly like this. It's just a little, a little bit slower of a gun. But hope you guys enjoyed this one again. I'm gonna have to get inside before it starts raining. See you later.